Hi guys, welcome back to another video on Rabbit and Q. In our previous section, we looked at the competing consumer or work you pattern implementation in Rabbit and Q. In this video, we're going to look at another interesting pattern, the pub sub pattern. So this pattern is all about delivering messages to multiple consumers. So it's kind of almost the opposite of the competing consumers pattern. The competing consumers pattern, we shared one message across many consumers. While in the pub sub pattern, we're taking that message and sending the same message or almost duplicating the message and sending it to multiple different consumers. And the reasons why we might want to do this is multiple different applications or different services, say in a microservices architecture, might be interested in processing the same message. As an example, a consumer might set up a new account with our system and we might publish a message into our system saying new account created and obviously several different microservices we might have might be interested in this so we might have a microservices that stores our users so obviously that's going to be interested in it. it's going to want to consume that message to store the user information but we might also have say a microservice that is used for auditing or gdp or that might be interested in processing that message or we might have a promotions microservice that might listen to that message that a new user has been added to the system and it might want to take that user's details and get them involved in various different promotions like emails we send out, etc. So there's many different use cases where several different services or consumers might be interested in processing the same message. And we don't want to send that message directly to every single service that's interested in it. We want to kind of decouple our producer from our consumers so we can add a new consumer so say 10 months down the line we add a new service where we want to manage payments and we need the user information in that we can just add the payment service as another consumer that's interested in consuming this user information created message so we can see on screen at the moment we have the basic flow that we had in our very first example. So we published a message onto the default exchange, which went to a queue and then was consumed by a consumer. And the real power of the pub sub pattern comes from the use of exchanges. So as we remember, we can only ever publish a message onto an exchange. In our previous case, we just used the default exchange, which kind of almost allows us to publish directly to a queue or what looks like publishing directly to a queue but the message still goes through the default exchange and so far we've only been using one type of exchange the direct exchange but there's multiple different types of exchanges in rabbitmq which we'll cover both in this video and the upcoming videos so there's the direct exchange the topic exchange the headers exchange and the fanout exchange and we'll focus on the fanout exchange in this video and all exchanges are quite simple they really just receive messages from producers and push them onto queues. But an exchange is what knows what to do with the message. Should it be sent to a single queue? Should it be sent to many queues? Should it be discarded or what? And in the case of the fanout exchange, we actually publish each message onto multiple queues. In our, say, user created example, we have a user created message that goes onto our exchange. And that exchange then publishes that onto all the queues that are interested. So instead of using consumer here, let's change it to what we might have called an actual service. So say we have the user info service, and that's obviously interested in the user created message. So say later we might have a new service, say a promotion service like we discussed, and that comes along and that is interested in consuming this message. So how does the promotion service get that same message? So it does that using the exchange. So we'll change this just from exchange and we'll call it a fan out exchange. So in this case, we want to fan out the message to multiple queues. So we'll have a second queue for our promotion service and we will fan out the message to that second queue. And the same way, this message is then basically copied to multiple different queues and then pushed to multiple different consumers or in this case services. A interesting note is the memory used by RabbitMQ doesn't actually store multiple copies of the message. It just stores the message once and then each queue stores a reference to that message. By adding multiple queues, consuming the same message, we're not actually duplicating the message and consuming a ton of memory. And then later on, like we said, another service might get added 
and the fan out exchange could just send a copy of the message to that service as well without the producer having to know anything about what services are actually consuming its messages and that's the kind of key point here is that we're completely decoupling our producer from our downstream services so the producer doesn't care if zero services are consuming its messages or if hundreds of services are consuming its messages it will just continue to publish them and the fan out exchange will take care of who's interested in actually listening to these messages we covered some of this terminology in the first video but with the pub sub style pattern what we do is we bind our cues to our exchange in a binding and the fan out exchange uses these bindings to know what cues are interested in the message in question so in this case we've got three cues three bindings so each message will be sent to each queue we might have a fourth queue in our system and a fourth service the payment service but because the queue connected to the payment service is not bound to the fan out exchange here it will not receive the user created message another interesting piece to understand around the pub sub pattern in rabbitmq is that we can actually use what's known as temporary queues for our services here so we don't need to explicitly declare these queues up front so the service if it's interested in the user created message can create a temporary queue to consume from and as soon as it's finished consuming or being interested in those user created messages that queue can then be destroyed so we will can understand more about how this all works by looking at some simple code examples and we'll do that in the following videos the first video as usual will be a python video of the implementation of the pub sub pattern and we'll follow that up with a second video using dotnet and c sharp so you can skip to whatever video for the implementation that you're most familiar with the language for so if you enjoyed this video please stick around for those implementations and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for some more rabbitmq content